Welcome to Project Brewpeg, a story of a sunken trawler being converted into an expedition and research boat by a mad couple. <laughs> Last episode you saw Damon and Trev get on with building the anchor, yay our anchor. Um, this week they put it together, weld it and sort out the roll bar. There's been one or two people out there that are struggling to get the fact that if we're doing two episodes a week we can't neatly compact all of our footage into one thing, i.e. anchor finished within one, e one episode. In fact from start to finish it's actually about two weeks when you look at like galvanising time and things like that. So um, I know most people get this but for the one or two people out there that don't, please understand that you can't build a boat in neatly compact episodes. Um, you do have to spread it out over time. And we're, not a, we're not a TV series. Yeah. You know where all the ed filming's done, the editing's done and then it's released. It's not like that. We're doing it as we go along. If you want something produced perfectly, we are not that channel. We no. are kind of the real time of what it takes to build a boat. The, all the good stuff and all the bad stuff. Today we're carrying on with the anchor build and of course last episode the guys realised that the roll bar was too wide for the flukes so they've got to sort that out first up. What are you doing? Assembling it. Oh. So it'll go through that. Dan's worked on this design now for a couple of years and taken all the best things from different anchors that he's seen over the time. You might notice different designs embedded in this one. And the hoop at the back. We're not going to bend that hole, like we're not going to bend it with what we've got here. You might end up cutting that welding, eh? We could actually just cut 50 mil out of the middle, and just do that. And just be v it off, and you know. Do you want to try the heat bending first yeah. if it doesn't easily work? Yeah. Then cut, maybe. Yeah. Um, put a strapper in there and just put a oh yeah lever in the middle. Yeah, right. Turn four, five, three. You know, measure that. And see what we're going to go there. Seventy-one. <laughs> Wow, it's bending. But we've come in a fair bit already. Yeah. And I haven't started yet. If you give that the herbs, we'll get, we'll get that right. This. What do you want? No. 71. Uh, leave that to the moon. Do you want to just hold it for the night, or what do you want to do? Yeah, I'll just stand. I'll stand here and hold it. <laughs> Gosh, it does look good. It's definitely brought it in, eh? I've never seen me both sort of float. Do you want a hot water bottle for your back for the walk home? <laughs> so it's the next morning, and we have to sort out this radius on the anchor. The guys have just um, raised the. Um, the drill press up and they've got to stand there. We're going to put the shank across there and, and I'm going to drill some holes out, try and get that radius shank. sorted out. Uh, I've just got to sort out the height. Yesterday I got my magnet and vacuumed up all of the cutting that we did. So it's all cleaned up but I basically just brushed this back and forth across after, like that after we did some um, cutting and grinding and things. And what that allowed me to do was this. That's iron filings. That allows me to, that there's basically just pure iron dust and it allows me to um, crack test at will. But, so magnet, iron, look at that. The reason I want to keep that iron dust is so that we can do crack testing on that weld that I showed you the other day. Um, and by using the magnet to pick it all up, it means all the carborundum from the grinding discs is pretty much just left behind and it's just the iron that you end up picking up. So it's a neat wee, um, cheap way of getting iron dust. You can see me here, I'm starting to drill the holes to get the radius on this part of the anchor so that it fits the anchor roller really well. Um, so the idea is just to drill holes big enough um, to leave a little gap between them uh, so that you can either hammer out that little block of metal or cut it out with a grinder. Um, we'll see how it goes. It's quite finicky and it takes a little while. Yeah. 
Dame and Trev start cutting out the slot for the shank to go through the flukes. So that's basically cut out, ready to go. So what we'll do now is bash that out with a hammer and then we'll clean those, um, clean up the ridges left with the grinder. I like big slots and I cannot lie. Trev's cutting out a couple of little triangle bits here. Yeah, I'm all done. We're just about out of grinding just so. We've only got two okay. left. Well, I can use a, a fair bit of... Oh yeah, a couple of them. <laughs> you know you're desperate when you're recycling from the pile. Yep, so Trev's cutting some little triangles and they fit on the front third of the anchor. So they basically weld in this area here. You can see that line just there. That's what um, the back end is going like that's where the back end finishes and it sort of overlaps a little bit onto the shank so we're we'll welding it into the shank so it weights the tip down a bit more so the front of this anchor is going to be 40 mil thick and the back will be 20 mil thick okay. oh, nice. we're gonna oh i see we're gonna lift the front of that it shouldn't do just grab one of those um down, down. I'll just hold it, I'll just hold it. Do you want a bit of water or something? No, that's it. Come down, come down slightly. That. Perfect. Look at that. Oh, lovely. That's what I wanted. Yeah. And, and, then, and then our second layer goes there. Our second layer goes there forward. So this will all be flush and smooth and this will stick up a little bit at the back. But it means I can get a massive weld on the underside as well. Is that through quite far enough? It'll, it'll probably tap, tap down a bit. Because it's, it's not, not balanced, it's not, it? it's not full uh, yeah. up on this end. Yeah, and that's how it's right. a little bit high. Yeah. Go for it, just whack it down. Alright. Not too far because we need to get it out. I don't know how you're going to get that out of there. <laughs> oh, you actually don't think it's going to come out? No, I don't think it will either. Oh, it's well, heavy, yeah, a little fake. Watch your bag. Yeah. Can I, I'll lift this if you can get rid of that. Oh, actually, let's do a side eight. Put it on the ground. Oh, yeah, that's good. Oh, that's good. I'm trying to let go of this heart.
So that cleaned up pretty nice. That end there, you can see we just sort of gave it a bit of a clean with the grinder to make sure there's no lumps and bumps, but we'll throw a, um, a hole in here for the chain, go and make sure our shackle's gonna fit through. I'm also gonna put a hole up here as well so that we can put a retrieval line. Radius, turned out pretty good, I'm happy with that. Hey? Is this a public meeting going on here? <laughs> no, I'm talking to myself, mate. You know what I'm like. Do you want to right. come up for some food in five more minutes? Can I have the what and the what? An early lunch. Early lunch sounds good. What are you saying? Yeah, do you want to just come up in five minutes? Righto. Cool. Everyone kept talking to me and I had bloody earplugs in. Sorry. I couldn't hear a word anyone was saying. Having a public meeting all by himself. <laughs> I'll see you in five. Alright. Cool. See you soon. Right, back to what I was actually talking about. Radius. Turned out lovely. You sort of see that. That's a um, 5 inch, 125 mil radius. And then we cleaned up all the edges, they came up nice. Didn't take much because we cut it with a 1 mil disc so it didn't take a lot of clean up, it's pretty easy. We'll go through and we'll clean that up with a flapper once we've finished the actual welding and it's all done. But for now, that shank's ready to start drilling holes in. Actually, do you want to go that side and grab that end of it? So easy, is that way? Yeah, over top of it. I need to get right up and into it, I've got to drill that. So. So we are out of grinding discs, um, that's one pile, that is our last lone surviving one mil disc and we still have to cut these out, so Trev sort of looks like a reasonable way through most of it, this one here looks, I can see daylight through a few of the slots, but yeah, we need to go and get some discs. The issue for us is that if we go into town, it takes an hour and a half from where we are to do a round trip. So I know what size to drill this hole the end of the shank. Gotta go and have a look at our anchor chain. So we need to get this sandblasted and galvanized. It's rusty, but structurally it's fine. That there is the shackle that's going on the end of our chain and the end of our anchor, so I need to figure out how big that pin is so I can make sure it's gonna fit. Right, let's go measure it. 25 mil. One inch. Another job the guys realised they needed to do was reinforce with some steel the hole where the anchor chain will go through. Uh, it just was a little bit too weak for our liking.
what we're doing here, we realised the hole was um, leaving not quite enough meat around that shank, so we're leafing that right up. Probably doesn't need it, but just in case. So that's our reinforcing. So it's basically a ring of 6mm steel that's 20mm thick. So yeah, I reckon we're pretty pretty much beefed up that stronger than what it was going to be anyway. Hitting. Just down that way. Alright, three, two, one. Yeah, now it's not going to go anyway. Well, that was simple enough. If only we did it that way the first time we dropped it. <laughs> we need to make sure it's straight. Go back over there. Because of me, it'll only be a cosmetic thing. Well, this side first. Okay. What is that? Yeah, pull it a little bit that way. Is it a little bit off the centre? Only a bee stick. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get that image out of my head. <laughs> Weld that join while it's still warm. So that's three layers, three beads basically down there. We've gone around, so that's going to be plenty strong enough to hold that. Um, what we're trying to do now is get some blocks and everything down the bottom here that are going to be the right size so that we can put that hoop where it needs to be. Um, it needs to, the radius needs to basically start at the edge of these uh, blades, but then we need about 100 mil sticking down so that we can make some little wedges that go in. It'll make sense shortly once we start building those. Bloody good. I'll just stay here then. Thank <laughs> you. 
Is it how you attach the bow? You just weld it? Yeah. So you're not. Okay. There'll be, there'll be gussets and all sorts of stuff in there when we finish though. Oh. Like, there's oh. more, more stuff to oh, handle. Yeah. 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 It's not that strong. No, no, it's definitely lost. Better go and do some more editing. Oh. So thanks for watching. Um, as you saw, Trevor and I got the shank welded in, the roll bar put on the back of the anchor. There's still a wee bit more to do. We've got to do some gussets um, up on that roll bar at the bottom there, and we've also got to put some weight on the front of the anchor on the tip. Um, that gets welded on on the underside. Trev started to cut that out. Um, so in the background, that's been sent off for hot dip galvanizing, and the wings have been sent off for sandblasting, and they've just come back painted. So a bit of a sneak peek behind me. So next steps. Trev's currently drilling the plates that bolt the, the arms to the boat, to the up by the deck there. So we're going to get those arms finished today. Are over the back, you can't quite see them yet, but we'll leave that for another episode. And, um, and then we can get those mounted onto the wings and get the wings put back onto the boat. Hi guys. <laughs> so, do you like my chair? <laughs> this is a chair that was donated um, by friends and, um, and family um, three years ago. Uh, when I couldn't walk very much. Um, so I've had a wee bit of a downturn. Um, I've been given the hard word, I'm not allowed to pick up the tools. Um, so, um, you won't see me so much in the physical side of things. Um, but I love my chair and I love being able to sort of be around the guys building um, and not getting so tired and, and so much pain. It's really wonderful, so lucky me. You got ice like summer sky If it's my good kill I die and now it starts to rain, so let's enjoy it.